What's up, Star Wars nerds, and welcome to another episode of Brett on Thet. On today's episode, we'll be counting down my top 10 figures and top 10 card backs for the Vintage Collection for 2023. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode 83 of Brett on Fett, and it is the last video I'm recording of 2023. And so I wanted to take this time to reflect on some of the amazing releases we've gotten for the Vintage Collection this year. I'm going to be giving you my top 10 TVC figures of the year, as well as my top 10 cardbacks of the year. And then just for fun, at the end, I'll give my top five figure cardback combo. Now, last year, if you watched this video, I didn't separate the figures from the card backs. It was more of a top 10 combination where I factored in a good card back along with the figure. I think I used about a two to three ratio on the figure. So the rating for the figure itself was more rated than the card back, but I wanted to give kind of the entire package when I did that top 10. But this year, there were several very good releases for figures that did not come on card. So I thought it would not be fair to have to factor in card backs with the figure when selecting my top 10. So I thought this year, it'd be a lot simpler to just go ahead and separate the figure from the card back and do two completely separate top 10s. And then just for fun, throw in top five of combos for those releases that were just really good figures and had really good card backs as well. Now just to go over some basic ground rules for this, number one for the figures, I am not counting any straight reissues or repacks. They have to be new releases. However, I am counting repaints of previous figures. So if they've taken a figure that was released a previous year and given it a completely new paint job, as a new character or a new release or new version, those figures will be eligible. But straight repacks where all they've done is maybe updated the photo reel for the face, I am not counting those figures for my top 10 figures. Now for card backs, the only requirement is that it is a new card back for the vintage collection. And so if they've done a straight repack or reissue of the figure, but put it on a different card back, then that would be eligible because it's obviously just about the card back and nothing to do with the figure. So as long as it's a new card back, it's good to go for my top 10 favorite card backs. And that's the basic ground rules, but I will have some other specific rules or exceptions, which I will get into a little later. All right, so let's go ahead and get things kicked off by going over my top 10 card back releases for the Vintage Collection. All right, to kick off my top card backs for 2023, I do want to start off with an honorable mention, and that is the Scout Trooper from Return of the Jedi. Classic card back. I love this image. An image of a character in motion, in action, is always a bonus for me. It's a VC-273, and I've always liked that image, so it's a great one. Just barely didn't make my top 10, as I'm giving slight preferences to card back images we've never had before. Of course, we've had the Scout Trooper many times going back to the Kinner days and more recently with the Saga Vintage Collection. But it's a great card back and it's just come out with the TVC finally this year, so I wanted to acknowledge it. All right, so starting off the top 10 at number 10, I have Chopper or C110P. This is just a really clean looking card back. I really like the image they use with Chopper in that white hallway. It makes them really pop with that bright white background. So. I thought they did a great job picking that image. It is VC304, and I love Chopper, and I just thought they did a great job with this card back, so I had to get him in my top 10. Next up at number 9, I have the Clone Trooper Phase 2 armor. I remember this was a bit of a surprise to me that they released this Clone Trooper on an Andor card, since it was a very small part of the series, although it was an important flashback scene. Uh, it says VC-269, but what a fantastic image of the trooper marching down the street. Very good use of lighting and just a great image overall. At number eight, I have Obi-Wan Kenobi Showdown from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Now, usually I don't like images on card backs that are 
pretty dark but maybe I'm changing my opinion because I've got at least a couple like that on this list. And this one is just really cool. It is VC290. And I just love that image of Obi-Wan being lit up solely by the light of his lightsaber. It just looks really cool. Next up at number seven, I have the Grand Inquisitor from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Just another great card back. Really good image of the Grand Inquisitor looking very formidable. I just don't think I could have done a better job selecting an image of him. It is VC-293. And I really like how the red light on his chest plate pops on this image. Next up at number six, I have Cad Bane. And this top six is getting really good and really difficult because... When I saw the Cad Bane car back, I thought this would be one of my top two or three favorites of the year. And it is an awesome image of Cad Bane. They did a great job choosing this one in that duel against Boba Fett. It is VC-283. And I really love how they chose the red name pill and figure pill to go with his red glowing eyes. Great image. Awesome car back. Next up at number five, I have General Hera Syndulla from the Ahsoka series. And for this one, it's all about the color coordination. This thing really pops with the purples catching off some of the other colors from Hera. I like the orange on top of the purple. It is VC 300. And overall, this card back is just very pleasing to the eye. Excellent for display. At number four, I have Boba Fett, the vintage comic art version. And what's not to like about this card back taken directly from the Star Wars number 42 comic book, Boba Fett's debut. I love the colors. I love the fact that Bosk and Dengar are staying there behind him. It is VC-277, and it's just a great image that they chose from that comic book. I love how it says, and now the bounty hunters on it. And I like the powder blue name pill as well. At number three, I chose the Klaatuinian Raider card back from the Mandalorian. That image of the ATST lighting up with those red glowing eyes is one of my favorite images from Mandalorian season one. And it busts out with a spotlight. And that was just so cool that they went with that on the car back. It is on the dark side, but you know, this was a scene at night. It is VC 266. But yeah, it's a little dark, but it's just so cool with that spotlight, the red glowing eyes. And you've even got the Raiders running there uh, at the bottom as well. So it's an action packed card back with just some really cool imagery. Up next at number two, I have Darth Vader Death Star 2 from Return of the Jedi. What a great image of Vader with his helmet off with Sebastian Shaw from that great scene with him and Luke. This is VC 280 and what I love about this image is it really feels like a classic image from a vintage Kenner figure we just never got. A version of Darth Vader we never got in the Kenner line but you can imagine if we did this is the image they would have used. So it just feels classic and new at the same time. I love it. And finally, my number one favorite card back for TBC of 2023 is Admiral Piet from Return of the Jedi. And I love this one for the same reasons I just described as why I love the Darth Vader image. Because it feels classic. It feels like something Kenner would have used. But that Death Star just really tops it off. This is VC270 and they could not have gone with a better image. That angle of Piet standing on the bridge of a Star Destroyer with that Death Star in the background just makes this an instant classic of a card back. One of my favorites of all time. And here's a last look at the top four card backs from my top 10. Just excellent ones. There was a lot of good choices this year, but these stood out as the best to me. All right, so next we're going to go through my top 10 TVC figures of 2023. But before we get to that, there are some exclusions I want to discuss that I am not counting for this list, including these two Vaders. You had the Death Star 2 Vader, and here is the Duels in Vader from OE1 Kenobi. Awesome, awesome figures, but I decided to leave them out because they are so similar. They're basically the same as the Vader we got last year with new heads, a few little touch-ups, repaints there. And so they would be eligible except for this one. I just didn't think it would be fair because that Vader was such an awesome figure. He was my number two, nearly number one, basically tied for best figure of the year last year. And so I just thought it would be unfair and maybe even a little boring if I allowed these versions of that Vader 
in my top 10 great figures and very welcomed uh, versions of Vader. Just don't want to include them. I want to go ahead and lump them together with the previous year's Vader. And then the other figure that I'm excluding from my top 10 is the Jedi Knight Revan. Again, this is just almost the same figure as the Darth Revan. It's basically a repaint. But since the figures came out at essentially the same exact time, I actually got this one first. Uh, I just didn't think it was right to include both of them in my top 10. So I am excluding the Jedi Knight Revan, even though it is an awesome, awesome figure. And I'm just making the Darth Revan eligible for this list. All right, and I wanna once again kick off my top 10 for the figures with an honorable mention. And for this honorable mention, I am lumping together the Imperial Officers. These are welcomed uh, figures to the line this year. They did a great job with these officer molds. Of course, I'm pretty partial to Thrawn. I'm just a huge Thrawn fan. But Krennic was awesome with that head sculpt, and I really liked Piet and Jajarod as well. The only downside with Piet and Jajarod is their caps are a little bit on the large size. They are removable, and that may have contributed to that, but it's not a huge deal overall. These are excellent figures, and I'm just very happy we got Imperial Officers in the line, so I want to acknowledge that with an honorable mention. All right, I am starting off the top 10 with a repaint. For number 10, I chose Boba Fett and his Kenner colors. This is one of my favorite TVC releases of all time, but since it is just a repaint of a previous Return of the Jedi Boba Fett mold, I did knock him down all the way to number 10. But this is one of my favorite repaints and just favorite releases in general because it's a great mold for Boba Fett and it's got that nostalgia from the Kenner line. Here he is next to my Taiwan graded Boba Fett and you can see they did a great job matching the old school colors of the figure. It just fills me with nostalgia and joy. I love this release. Like I said, it's one of my favorite TVCs of all time, but I had to knock it down to number 10 because it is simply a repaint. At number nine, I have Hunter, and this is one of the first figures we got in 2023. And I remember when I got this figure and reviewed him, I was thinking this guy is easily going to be a top five figure of the year, but there was just so much good stuff that beat him out. But excellent head sculpt, a very good translation from the animated character to a more realistic line that is TVC. Great paint apps, and overall, this guy just looks awesome. Now, he does have great articulation, and I love that he has this little vibro blade that fits into his little storage compartment there on his gauntlet. What a great feature. So fun posing this figure. Now, the helmet is a little bit on the large size. I know when I first reviewed him, I didn't think it was that bad, but as I kept him over time, I did start to feel like maybe I was wrong about that. And the helmet is a little too big. And I think that's probably why I've ended up knocking him down to number nine. Otherwise, great figure. At number eight, I have the Grand Inquisitor from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Another all new figure that Hasbro has done an amazing job on. This figure overall looks so good. The head sculpt looks spot on to me. Paint apps are on point. The accessories look good. The articulation is really excellent. You can see with his elbows, for example, he can fold uh, past 90 degrees. So that's great for a saber wielder. Love the sabers and how this can mount on the back. One of my favorite features of this figure. Very cool feature there. And I like the soft goods cape with the two tones. So really happy with this one. He just looks awesome. Next up at number seven, I have General Hera Syndulla. Maybe one of the pleasant surprises of 2023 is this figure. She looks amazing. Great head sculpt. I love the goggles on her helmet there. I love the details on her jacket, the decals. The jacket itself is separate and I just, I like the artwork on the back. Very nice. Everything is really great about this figure. And even her blaster pistol has some paint apps on it, uh, which looks really good for a relatively small gun there. And I'm not sure why my expectations for this figure were so low. Maybe it has something to do with I didn't really like how she was portrayed on the Ahsoka series. So I just wasn't too excited about this figure. But really, they could not have done a better job, I think. This is a truly excellent figure that could easily be ranked higher in anyone's list, and it probably will be on a lot of people's top five. 
My next figure at number six was the very last figure of 2023 for TVC that I acquired, and it is Pre Vizsla. And this guy is awesome. When I first got him, I thought, okay, this guy is easily going to be my top five, maybe even top three. I just love the helmet and the paint apps on his chest plate. Everything looks so good on this figure. And the it's got all the articulation you need. The dark saber looks cool. I love the way his jetpack looks. And you know, maybe one of the best things about this figure, at least besides the helmet, is the head sculpt. What a perfect translation from the animated version to a more realistic TVC version of Pre Vizsla. He just looks awesome. And I think the only reason I have at number six is because he does have a lot of reuse from a figure from last year, from the Mandalorian figures we got before. And there's just so much good competition this year. So I just ended up having to put him at six, even though he is such an awesome figure. At number five, I went with Boba Fett Tuscan from the Book of Boba Fett. And I struggled flipping back and forth between Boba Fett Tuscan and Pre Vizsla for this number five spot. Ultimately went with this Boba Fett because he just has so much to offer here. And it is mostly new stuff on this figure. A little bit of reuse, but mostly new. And under the cloth goods, which is awesome by the way, there's just so much going on with his belt and his holster. I just really like the cloth goods though. The hood is perfect the way it fits. And I really like the accessories he comes with, with that long rifle and his gaffy stick, which has paint apps on it. And then his holster with his blaster pistol. And the fact that his cloth goods look so good, but you can remove them and the figure is almost just as good without the cloth goods on him. It's just a very versatile figure. It's a great release. I had to get him in the top five. At number four, another awesome figure from the Book of Boba Fett, and that is Cad Bane. One of my favorite bad guys in Star Wars of all time. A much needed release, a very welcomed release, and they did an excellent job with this all new figure. He looks so good. His face sculpt with his little breathing apparatus, his gauntlets. Everything about this figure is pretty excellent. A lot of great detail. Just couldn't ask for more on this figure. Now, one thing I was disappointed in is they didn't put the metal plate on his head like they did on the Black Series version. And also, I thought his hat is a little bit oddly shaped. It's a little too wide where the crown meets the brim. Um, but I think they just had to do that to make it work and fit properly on his head. It's not a big deal. It's just a minor thing that kind of bothered me. But so happy to get this figure in the line. And I really hope they make more versions of Cad Bane, particularly the Clone Wars version, which happens to be my favorite version of the character. The Book of Boba Fett figures are coming in strong. I've got another one. At number three, I have Kersantan. Now, this is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive version of Kersantan, which has the different head sculpt where he's growling. This is basically the same figure, just a different head sculpt. It could have gone with either one, but I prefer this version of his head sculpt. Plus, the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive comes with more accessories. I'm not going to get into all the accessories. I will just say the accessories are awesome. But I love this figure for the details and the sculpting they did. It's just excellent. The only issue here is his head cannot rotate hardly at all. But I don't know how they can make that work and still look as good as it did. So I'm okay with it. The rest of the articulation on this figure is excellent. This is just a beast of a figure. It looks so good. I'm really happy with this one. There was just no way I was leaving him out of my top three. At number two, I have Darth Revan from Knights of the Old Republic. Now, full disclosure, Darth Revan was my number one most wanted figure from TV for TVC last year. And so I could be a little bit biased, but I just think this figure looks so good. They nailed it. They hit this one out of the park. I love the tethered cloth goods, the paint apps even under the skirt. The combination of soft plastic with cloth goods works with the hood and everything. And the paint apps just look so good. All the details. I just really love everything about this figure. The lightsabers. Now to me the only issue with this figure is the elbows just barely get 90 degrees. And getting past 90 degrees would really be ideal for a lightsaber wielder. But it's not that big a deal. I don't find that I have really any issues posing him how I want to pose him. And I think it's something that can be easily forgiven based on how good he looks. 
And this is a very easy choice at number two for me. So by now you've probably guessed my number one favorite figure of the year for TVC and it is of course Paz Vizsla. He did not come on a card back which was very disappointing. They released him in a deluxe box but the figure itself does not disappoint. He is awesome. They nailed it on this figure. Look at his gun. All the details, you got a little bit of weathering going on. Look how great his jetpack looks. Really excellent stuff there. Paz Vizsla has been one of my favorite Black Series figures of all time. And achieving that level of detail in the six inch scale is one thing, but getting it just as good in the three and three quarter scale is a totally different ball game. And they just did a great job. And I love the accessories with this little shield that can go on his gauntlet. And of course the Viro blade that can slip there on the side of his leg with the little holster there. The articulation is great for such a bulky figure. A lot of fun posing this guy. And he's just such a cool character. He's long overdue for the TVC line. So glad he finally made it and it was worth the wait because he is the best figure of 2023. And here is another look at all of my top 10 vintage collection figures for 2023. It truly was a great year for TVC. We got a lot of quality stuff with some pretty good variety of figures, including some high quality new media figures. Some taking a lot longer to arrive than we had hoped for, but well worth the wait. And finally, as mentioned earlier in my video, I wanted to do sort of a bonus countdown of figures. And this is for the best figure and card back combination. I'm just going to do a top five. And I'm going to run through these pretty quickly. And I'll start with another honorable mention, and that is Boba Fett Tuscan. Such an excellent figure, number five on my top 10 figure list. And the card back is solid, just not quite as good as some of those others I had on my card back list. But together, they make for a great combo, so I had to mention him as an honorable mention. Kicking things off at number five, I have Darth Revan. Highly rated as a figure, number two on my figure list. And the card back is really cool too. It's got some very cool artwork of Revan as well. And so together, they make for a great combination. Easy pick for me at number five for best figure card back combo. Coming in at number four, I have Grand Inquisitor. A figure that made it to my top 10 both as a figure and as a card back so easy pick for me here at number three i went with admiral piet of course the card back won my top 10 for 2023 it was my very favorite this year and the figure is really good as well so this is an easy choice at number three and overall it makes a great display for card back and figure at number two i have general harrison doula from ahsoka Excellent card back, excellent figure. Both made a showing in my top 10 at the respective categories. And so this overall makes for a nice package to display for anyone's collection. And finally, my number one choice for best action figure and card back combination is Cad Bane from the Book of Boba Fett. Such a cool figure, such an excellent choice for a card back image. If you only collect carded vintage collection figures, Cad Bane is the best and most complete package you could have gotten in 2023 as far as the quality of the figure and quality of the card back combined. All right, so that's gonna do it for this last episode of 2023 for Brett on Fett. Let me know in the comments what your favorite TVC figures and favorite TVC card backs were for 2023. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you're having a great holiday so far. Happy New Year to everyone and let's have a great 2024. Take care and we'll see you next time.